Welcome back to another episode of opening up stuff and seeing what's inside. I saw this interesting printing accessory when I was at my local Goodwill. Unfortunately, the box was empty, so I had to pick up one from eBay instead. This device is the IS-22 and is a color image scanner cartridge. Its design allows you to turn your printer into a scanner. As you may have guessed, this would plug in directly where your ink cartridge would normally go. Instead of ink coming out the bottom, there's a tiny window that allows the image to be scanned. I'm assuming that it uses all of the same pins, but repurposes them with software that you would install. It really is quite impressive that they were able to repurpose this interface that would normally allow you to print, and instead allows you to scan images and documents. Without further ado, let's open it up and see what makes it work. It looks like it should be pretty easy to open. One side has hinges, and the other has a clip that needs to be flipped open. After unclipping the clip, the bottom rotates open, but it stops. There's something holding it closed. Getting a closer look inside, there appears to be a sticky piece of foam holding the two pieces together. I was able to carefully cut through the foam with an X-Acto knife, and the two pieces are now 100% separated. I was definitely expecting there to be more circuitry in here, but it looks like they fit everything in the bottom half. That being said though, the top half isn't empty. It has a weight inside of it. Obviously all the interesting things are in the bottom half. It's hard to see exactly what's going on here, so let's start removing screws and see what happens. I'll start with the two screws that are holding the printer interface onto the plastic housing. With these two screws removed, the flexible circuit board can bend open, revealing all of the circuitry inside. I was surprised just how much stuff they were able to cram onto this flexible circuit board. There's a lot of different circuits, but I was immediately drawn to the large chip that was marked QH7-8802. I was unable to find any data sheets or information on what this part is, but I'm assuming it does translation between the printer interface and the other device that we have yet to see on this circuit board. There must be something behind this black piece of plastic that's converting the light from the scanned image into a digital signal. If I rotate the device around, you can see that there's a mirror held in place, which is reflecting the light up into a hole in the black plastic. On the left is a window for the image to go, and the right is a row of LEDs to illuminate it. It looks like the next step will be to remove these two black screws. With the two screws removed, almost everything comes out. There's just a small piece of flex going down to the LEDs. It's tucked in there pretty good, so I'm just gonna leave it. Now we can see what the entire flex looks like unfolded. It's pretty big, but there's still one thing that we haven't seen yet, and it's the sensor behind this black piece of plastic. Once more, there are two screws on the back that need to come off. With these two screws removed, the housing simply lifts off, revealing the secret treasure underneath. From the looks of it, this part appears to be some sort of linear scanning array, but we'll have to get it under the microscope to get a closer look. In addition to containing a lens, this housing also has a piece of metal with a very tiny slit cut through it. I'm assuming this is to help focus the light exactly where the sensing elements are. The only way to confirm all of this, of course, is to get this piece under the microscope. I'll start by looking at it under the lower magnification microscope. I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but these are my favorite types of parts. I love how you can see all the way through the part, including all of the wire bonds and the lead frame. They really are quite unique. In order to look at this under the higher power magnification microscope, it needs to be laying completely flat. And to do that, I'll use the help of a PCB coin and my favorite sticky stuff, blue tack. 
By the way, if you want to support the channel, you can get your own PCB coins on my store. You can even collect all four current designs. There's also some silicon wafers and other stuff on there, so you should definitely check it out. Anyways, with the sensor now stuck to the PCB coin, I can easily put it under the microscope and manipulate it until I get the sensor flat enough to view. Let's take a closer look! We'll start off here at 50 times magnification. There's a lot of interesting designs on here, and as we move to the left, we can start to see some text, which we'll come back into a minute after I've scanned around the entire chip. Overall, the chip is pretty small, so it doesn't take too long to zoom around at 50 times magnification. We can already see a linear structure of repeating elements. There are also lots of pretty colors that you may have noticed, which are the result of looking at this with polarized light. Yet another reason why I enjoy these so much. Going back to the text, we see that it says Canon LZ400J. Once again, trying to look up this part number yielded no useful information. To me, it looks like all the circuits across the bottom are to support the sensing elements which are located on the top half. I believe that this part is a linear CCD, or charged coupled device. If you want to learn more about charge couple devices, I would recommend heading over to the Wikipedia page, which has a lot of great information. We can go all the way to 500 times magnification to get a closer look at some of these circuit elements. Unfortunately though, at the higher magnification, things become a little bit more cloudy due to interference from the epoxy. I'm pretty sure that all this stuff up on top are additional support circuits to convert light from these black squares, which I believe are photodiodes. I counted them all, and I believe there's 130 of these photodiodes. On the left side, there are eight of them that are fully covered, and on the right, there's just one. According to the packaging, this is capable of 360p resolution and color, and I'm not 100% sure how it does color scanning. I think the only thing left to do is put it back together and see if it works in a printer. Luckily, I have this BJC2110 that my dad gave me. Surprisingly, it still works. If I remove the ink inside, we can compare how it looks to the scanner cartridge. They do look like they're about the same size. Other than fitment, the other important thing that needs to match is the electronic interface. Looking closer and comparing the two side by side, it's easy to see that they have the exact same layout. While we have it open, here's a shot of the mating interface inside the printer. I guess we might as well put it in and see what happens, right? Well, it didn't immediately burst into flames, that's always a good sign. If you recall earlier, this is supposed to work with the BJC 2000 series printers. Unfortunately though, this is as far as I'm going to take it in this video. To actually get this working, I would need to either set up a Windows XP PC or a virtual machine. I would also have to find drivers for both the printer and the scanner cartridge, both of which I don't have right now. Not to mention I could even go through all this trouble to set it up and it might not even work. While I would enjoy seeing this working, I'd much rather spend my time opening up chips and looking at them under the microscope. Who knows, maybe you could convince your favorite technology YouTuber to try and take a crack at this. I'm sure there are plenty of them that would love to do it. As for me, I have a huge backlog of chips to get through and videos to edit that I'm sure you're going to want to see. Feel free to join the Discord if you want to see what I'm working on in between videos. If you made it this far, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss future videos. I'm just saying, the next video is pretty cool. You're not going to want to miss it.